God, I can't stand the wailing of women. One word, and I hit you again. You have to enjoy the little things in life, like watching characters you hate suffering horrible deaths. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 satisfying moments in Game of Thrones. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at the moments from the hit HBO series that were the most pleasing for fans, whether they were genuinely heartfelt or morbidly rewarding. It goes without saying this whole list is a giant spoiler, so a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 10, Cersei's Imprisonment. Let me go immediately. You will order her to let me go. I am the queen. From the beginning, Cersei Lannister has showed us that she's a master when it comes to playing the Game of Thrones. She's manipulative and will go to any lengths when it comes to protecting her children and destroying her enemies. Is this meant to be your shield, Lord Stark? A piece of paper. For the majority of the series, she eluded punishment. That is, until she's finally bested by the very man she elevated to a position of power, the eloquent but fanatical High Sparrow. What will we find when we strip away your finery? Watching her being dragged away like so many of her victims is practically cathartic. Sure, she eventually gets her revenge by killing them all with wildfire and torturing Septa Unella, but we'll never forget the joy of watching her get her just desserts. My faith will be the last thing you see. Number 9. The Cave Ingrid! Seven hells! Jon Snow has been through quite a lot since leaving Winterfell but fate finally gave him a break when he met the wildling Egret. Your friends are nowhere close. I'll find them. Despite their opposing backgrounds, the two eventually fall for each other. The kiss they share atop the wall is definitely a sweet moment, but it just doesn't compare to when Jon breaks his vow and makes love to her in a cave. There's definitely an abundance of sex in Game of Thrones, but few of those scenes has been as sweet and emotional as this moment in the cave. The intensity of the scene and genuine chemistry between Jon and Egret makes the whole affair not only steamy, but also quite beautiful. A maid. You were a maid. I was a man of the Night's Watch. Number 8. Lyanna Mormont. You were named for my Aunt Lyanna. It was said she was a great beauty, I'm sure you will be too. I doubt it. My mother wasn't a great beauty or any other kind of beauty. She was a great warrior, though. The breakout character from the sixth season was by far the young ruler of Bear Island. Yes, she may be a small child, but we soon learn that Lyanna Mormont has more guts than most of the Northern Lords combined, and she does not take crap from anyone. Why should I sacrifice one more moment life for someone else's war? She's one of the first to pledge her loyalty to Jon, but her crowning moment comes after the reclaiming of Winterfell, while she calls out all those that failed to align themselves with the Starks only to then inspire them by proclaiming Jon Snow to be the true king in the north. For such a little girl, she sure makes one hell of an impact. We know no king, but the king in the north whose name is Stark. I don't care if he's a bastard. Ned Stark's blood runs through his veins. He's my king, from this day until his last day. Number seven, a crown for a king. Keep away from me. Viserys, please. Viserys Targaryen is not a good brother by any stretch of the imagination. Hiding behind his name and selling his own sister in exchange for an army, he believes that he's owed the Iron Throne as a birthright. Unfortunately, his plans come undone when Daenerys and her Dothraki husband Khal Drogo end up actually falling in love. In a drunken rage, Viserys threatens to cut out her unborn child during a celebration. This proves to be a fatal mistake, as Khal Drogo doesn't take too kindly to his threat. Ah! No! No! You cannot touch me! He has his blood riders break Viserys' arm before they hold him down and give him the crown he's always wanted, in the form of burning hot molten gold. That's gotta hurt. A crown for a king. <laughs> ah! 
Number 6. Father and Son Tywin Lannister is both a ruthless tyrant and a complete badass. We certainly respect him for his ability to command, and his unrelenting devotion to the legacy of his house. Hold fast! Hold fast! What are you doing? We need to attack them! Hold fast! However, fans will likely never forgive him for his treatment of his son Tyrion. Humiliated and verbally abused his whole life, Tyrion's breaking point comes when he realizes that his own father has not only sentenced him to death, but also turned the love of his life Shay against him and slept with her. As expected, Tyrion is both enraged and heartbroken by this revelation, and this ultimately leads to the father-son confrontation in a privy that would be their last. A Lannister always pays his debts. You're no son of mine. I am your son. I have always been your son. <laughs> Number 5. The Purple Wedding mm, Good. Knees washing down. <laughs> Joffrey Baratheon will go down in history as one of television's most hated villains. Despite being so young, his sadistic nature, murderous habits, cowardice, and the abuse he inflicts on Tyrion and Sansa makes him an utterly detestable king. Season after season, fans cried out for this little bastard to bite the dust. And the creators answered in spectacular fashion. On the day of his wedding, during one of his normal tirades, the boy king succumbs to a poison known as the Strangler. It's nothing. <sighs> While he was deserving of a much harsher death, watching the tyrant struggle to breathe as his body is left as nothing more than a grotesque husk is wholly satisfying. <laughs> Number 4. The End of the Slave Masters during Daenerys' visit to the city of Astapor, she's greeted by a slave master whose vocabulary mostly consists of slurs, slander, and insults towards her. And to this point, as viewers, we're all under the impression that Danny has no idea what he's talking about, and that trading one of her dragons, even for an army like the Unsullied, is a huge mistake. Turns out that Daenerys Stormborn is no fool, and is able to understand the slaver the whole time due to her fluency in High Valyrian. She rewards his malicious words by letting Drogon rain fiery hell down upon him and all his cohorts. With the masters finally dead, Danny and her new army of Unsullied march on. Number 3. Avenging the Red Wedding You're not one of mine, are you? No, my lord. Walder Frey quickly established himself as one of Game of Thrones' most detestable characters after he hosted and helped organize the deaths of Rob and Catelyn Stark, not to mention Rob's pregnant wife. Vengeance for the Starks comes unexpectedly, however, as a nameless servant reveals to Frey that she's killed, carved, and baked his sons into a pie. They weren't easy to carve. This revelation is quickly followed by another, when the servant girl exposes herself as none other than Arya Stark, who then proceeds to avenge her mother and brother by slicing Frey's throat open. <laughs> <laughs> Her killing of Trant and reclaiming of her name may be worthy of praise, but this death is particularly satisfying. Number 2. Resurrection Apologies for what you're about to see. Jon Snow's murder practically broke the internet, as fans were forced to wait until Season 6 to find out if their favorite bastard would eventually be brought back to life. Resurrection was always a possibility in the minds of eager fans, especially after we saw what the Red Priests could do thanks to the power of the Lord of Light. But not today. At the urgency of Sir Davos, Melisandre attempts to bring the fallen Lord Commander back from the dead. Alas, the Red Woman seems to have failed, and as the episode draws to a close, we're treated to a lingering shot of Jon's corpse, which ends when he draws his first breath of new life. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief as John's eyes finally reopen. 
before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, the death of Ramsey Bolton. I think that sounds like a wonderful idea. You have to give credit to Ramsey. He faces some stiff competition on his way to becoming the most sadistic antagonist in Westeros. Nevertheless, we have to bestow that honor upon the bastard. He tortures and castrates Theon, abuses Sansa, has his stepmother and newborn brother fed to the hounds. The list of atrocities he's perpetrated goes on and on. <laughs> Watching Jon beat his face bloody is definitely worth celebrating, as is the taking back of Winterfell. But Ramsay's ultimate fate is the cherry on top of it all. Stop. Stop. As revenge for all the pain he put her through, Sansa unleashes Ramsay's own starving hounds on him. We all share Sansa's smile as we hear his screams of pain. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.